Hello, everybody. I'm Jamie Wolf, and I'm here at uh, Pine Ridge Baptist, and I am reading um, through uh, the Matthew, and I'm chapter 9 today. And um, I just hope everybody will help read this, and I'll help it apply to their lives, and um, you know, they get something out of it like I do every time I read it. Um, I'm reading, right now I'm reading Jesus Heals a Paralyzed Man, and at this point, he's getting into his uh, ministry pretty deep, and he's, he's performing miracle, miracles all over the place and saving people and healing people. So he, he's well on his way. But also, like I mentioned before, he's got people coming behind him already mocking him and bashing on him, criticizing everything he does. And some people even think that he got, gets his power from Satan, or, or as they called him back then, Baal. And we know that's not true. So anyway, I'm going to continue with in chapter 9. I am reading right now, and Jesus heals a paralyzed man. Jesus climbed into a boat and went back across the lake to his own town. Some people brought to, his, some people brought to him a paralyzed man on a mat. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Be encouraged, my child. Your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious law said to themselves, That's blasphemy. Does he think he's God? Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? Is it easier to say to your sins, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven, or stand up and walk? So I'll prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned up to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up and went home. Fierce wept through the crowd as they saw this happen. And they praised God for sending a man with such a great authority. Jesus calls Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting in a, at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple. Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and the disciples to his home as dinner guests along with many tax collectors and the other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, What did your teacher, why did your teacher eat with the scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy, pe healthy people don't, don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now, go and learn the meaning of the scripture. I want you to show, the, show mercy, not to offer sacrifices. For I have come to call those, for I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. One day the disciples, okay, I'm discussing about fasting. One day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, Why don't your disciples fast like we do and the Pharisees do? But Jesus replied, Do wedding guests mourn, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and they will fast. Besides, who would besides who would patch old clothes with new cloth? For the for the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into an old wine skins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure of spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wine skins, so both that are preserved. Jesus heals in response to faith. As Jesus was saying, the teacher of the synagogue came and knelt before him. My daughter has just died, he said, but you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hand on her. So Jesus and the disciples got up and went with him. Just then a woman who had suffered for 12 years of consistent, consistent bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman healed at a moment. When Jesus arrived at the office, official's home, he saw a noisy crowd, and he heard a funeral music. Get out, he told them. The girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him. After the crowd was put outside, however, Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand, and she stood up. The report of this miracle swept through the entire countryside. Jesus heals the blind. After Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men followed along behind him, 
shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him, we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, Because of your faith, it will happen. Then their eyes were opened, and they could see. Jesus sternly warned them, Don't tell anyone about this. But instead they went out and spread his fame all over the region. When they left, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. So Jesus cast out the demon, and the man began to speak. The crowds were amazed. Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel, they claimed. They exclaimed. But the Pharisees said, he can cast out demons because he is empowered by the prince of demons. Jesus, the need for workers. The Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he, he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. That's the end of chapter 9. And that's, uh, it's a, this is really where he starts getting into his ministry, like I was mentioning. And um, I think faith has a big, plays a big part in our healing when we're sick, illness, injured, or whatever. Because if we don't believe we haven't received the, the, the prayer or the blessing we follow, we won't receive it. And if we do believe we've already received it, we already have received it. And that's one thing we have to remember, that God anything God can do anything in all possibilities through him, or all possibilities through him are what we're looking for. I said that wrong. I'm sorry. All, everything is possible through him, but just keep your faith. Don't give up your faith, because a lot of people are, because of the way things are in our world. It's not just in our country. It's all over the planet. I'm just asking people to come back to God, watch our videos, listen to our messages, because it's truth. Um, I just want to say I love each and every one of y'all, and whoever's prayed for me for my problems with my ankle, I do, I, I do thank you, because it goes a long way. And um, we miss you, and we love you, and I want to thank everybody for watching.